I believe that uh, you and I have a lot to learn from this uh, reflection and, um, and, and think about why it had the influence that it had. And it, partly it's a function of the age it came from, an age in which uh, marvelous things were being done with language. Uh, there was an ear for language in the age of Shakespeare and Milton uh, and the King James um, that is perhaps different from any other age. In many ways, they shape the culture that we belong to. And because they were in an era when there was no sharp distinction or separation between church and state, something that you and I take for granted, we expect a separation, there was no such notion in the 17th century. After all, it is the King James state Bible church. Those were one and the same, and there was no problem. There was no obvious tension between it being something sponsored and encouraged by King James and, uh, and serving uh, the life of the whole community. Uh, Christopher Hill says, by the 17th century, the Bible was accepted as central to all spheres of intellectual life. It was not merely a religious book. In our narrow sense of the word religion, church and state in Tudor England was one. The Bible was, or should be, the foundation of all aspects of English culture. And uh, I think we'll see that's true uh, in many ways. Um, amazing uh, words, and I appreciate what Mark did a moment ago. I thought uh, along the way I would uh, give you uh, examples of the, how you speak King James English. I know many of you think because you no longer say thee, thy, thou, etc. That somehow or another you've moved beyond King James, I would maintain that you haven't. Uh, are, are any of these phrases uh, in your vocabulary, in your, in your word, word hoard? Uh, eat, drink, and be merry. Sour grapes. Fatted calf. Feet of clay. Salt of the earth. Carmageddon. <laughs> For, the, us in, for those of us in Southern California, one of the things you'll find, and there's a whole book on this, if you get interested in this, it's not exactly scholarly, but it's huge fun. There's a book out called Begat, <laughs> and then there's a long subtitle. But it's all the ways we are making use of words and phrases in the King James Version today, and then adapting them in clever uh, and, and funny ways. Um, the writing is on the wall. On you go. This is one of my favorites. This is out of Time Magazine. And Oprah spake, blessed are you, for you are Rachel, and upon this rock I will build my television empire. Uh, Rachel Ray's talking show is going to be the basis of the great success of her, of her show. Uh, on and on we could go. We'll, uh, we'll forego too many examples, but there are endless cases of adaptation and allusion and, and quotation. Uh, here's an interesting phrase that's just been used over and over again. Have you ever heard someone say, well, they're a law unto themselves? Uh, there was an article that came out about Jude Law, and guess what? That was the title. Uh, very clever, a law unto himself. But all these personalities have had articles where they were described as being a law unto themselves. Johnny Cash, Nicole Kidman, Madonna, Rupert Murdoch, Amy Winehouse, Colonel Gaddafi. <laughs> All of these people are a law unto themselves. And thank you, the thing is, we all immediately and instantly know what it means. Why? Because it's completely uh, entered into our language, our vocabulary, uh, our world. 